The following presentation is a summary of a presentation that was given at the first annual International Symposium on Light Sources in Dentistry. Understanding the maximum permissible thickness of each layer of composite is critical information for the dental practitioner. Historically, composite has been incrementally placed into preparations to reduce the consequences of shrinkage stress and light attenuation. Depth of cure refers to the thickness that a resin composite can be placed in order to assure adequate mechanical properties and biocompatibility. Depth of cure has been measured with several methods. Common methods include measurement of bottom to top or bottom to maximum hardness ratio, degree of conversion, ISO standard 4049 or the scrape test, or penetrometry using a needle. However, when evaluating depth of cure, it is important to consider what level of cure is necessary to be clinically successful. Several studies have somewhat arbitrarily defined depth of cure based on hardness ratios of 80%. That is, the bottom surface is at least 80% as hard as the top surface. Others have suggested that the bottom surface should be expressed as a ratio with maximum hardness because top surface hardness can vary depending on the curing light or protocol. A few studies have concluded that the ISO 4049 method overestimates depth of cure compared to hardness ratios. The rationale for dividing the length of the scrape specimen by two is somewhat arbitrary and is based on the notion that not all of the hardened specimen is optimally cured. A recent study by Le Prince and others concluded that not only the ISO 4049 technique, but hardness ratios in general overestimate depth of cure. The authors recommend that the depth of cure should be the depth at which the resin matrix switches from a glassy to a rubbery state using AFM and DSE. However, Fleury and others contend that the hardness ratios can vary depending on how the top or maximum hardness is obtain. Other considerations with placement of composite resins is the consequences of shrinkage stress. The maximum incremental thickness has historically been 2 millimeters. However, restoring deeper preparations with 2 millimeter increments is time consuming and relatively technique sensitive. Manufacturers have introduced new bulk filled flowable composites and restorative composites which reportedly can be cured in increments of 4 millimeters or greater. Studies evaluating the efficacy of incremental versus bulk fill have been somewhat equivocal, with higher shrinking stress and cuspal deflection in some studies, but reduced cuspal deflection in others. This is a finite element analysis study which found an increase in cuspal deflection with incremental placement of composite. Similarly, a study looking at MOD preparations in premolars again found an increase in cuspal deflection with incremental placement of composite. However, a study by Lee and other found a reduction in cuspal deflection with incremental placement again in MOD preparations in premolars. Similarly, Kim found a reduction in cuspal deflection in MOD preparations in premolars. A study by Kwan and others using aluminum blocks found a reduction in deflection with incremental placement. And finally, a study by Park and others who also found a reduction in deflection with incremental placement using aluminum blocks. When looking at all of these laboratory studies, we must consider, however, how clinically significant the reduction cuspal deflection is when placing composites incrementally over the placement in bulk. Incremental layering may allow flow during curing with additional free surface area. However, incremental curing also allows more maximal polymerization and subsequently more shrinkage stress. Little clinical evidence exists to support one particular composite application method over another.